Dubai is a very flamboyant country with Lamborghini police, the Burj Khalifa and the Palm Islands. But what's even more surprising is that Dubai has been able to accomplish this with no sales or income tax imposed on any of its residents. Considering that Dubai is not an oil rich city like many of its neighbors with less than 5% of its GDP being derived from oil, how is Dubai not only able to operate but thrive? Well, starting off, Dubai operates more like a private business rather than a country. In fact, a lot of their income is from businesses that they own like Emirates and the Burj Al Arab. But those are just the most well known ones. Dubai owns a plethora of other companies under various holding companies like the Dubai Holding Company which owns the Jumeirah Group, Dubai Properties, Tcom Group, Arab Media Group, Dubai International Capital and more. And if you dive into each of these companies, you'll find even more subsidiary companies. For instance, the Tcom Group is comprised of the Dubai Internet City, Healthcare City, Media City, Studio City, Knowledge Village, Industrial City and many more. As you can see, Dubai is heavily invested in many businesses inside the country which generate billions of dollars of profit per year. Emirates alone pulled in $62 million in the first half of 2018 and this was after an 82% decrease in profit due to high fuel prices. Moving on, Dubai also has other sorts of business revenue that are unique to its location. Dubai is located near the tip of the Arabian Peninsula right next to the Persian Gulf. This optimal location has allowed them to build up a very busy port called the Port of Jabal Ali which is the ninth busiest port in the world with an annual container volume of 13.6 million. On top of this, their very modern and sleek city has been very appealing to many film and TV show directors. Way back in 2011, Dubai was able to earn 40 million dollars from just film and TV production. Clearly, Dubai makes a lot of money from their business ventures. But that's only a third of the puzzle. Next up is tourism. Obviously, there is a lot of money to be made for Dubai off of tourism as many of the most popular tourist destinations are government owned. But this is just the beginning. Tourists are charged up to 10% tax on their hotel rooms and may also face municipality fees, service charges, city tax and a tourism fee. There is even a departure tax which is included in the cost of buying a flight ticket, landing or departing from Dubai. All of these tourist taxes coupled with the high tourism volume in Dubai generate billions of dollars in revenue. In 2018, $30.82 billion was spent by just overnight international visitors in Dubai. Considering that Dubai brings in the most tourist dollars worldwide, it's not hard to see why it's such an integral part of their economy. Though residents of Dubai don't have to pay sales or income taxes, there are still fees to pay like the housing fee. The housing fee applies if you are renting, in which case you are obligated to pay 5-10% to of your annual rent to the government. This covers common community services like garbage collection, street cleaning, landscaping and irrigation. Another source of revenue is any sort of government issued license like driver's licenses. Driver's licenses are very expensive in Dubai ranging between 4500 to 7500 dirhams or 1200 to $2000 if you are able to pass on your first try. Each additional attempt will cost you 1200 to 1500 dirhams or 300 to 400 dollars. If you do get a driver's license, well, you should be a good law abiding driver because you definitely do not want to face a speeding ticket and don't think you are safe if you don't see any police nearby. See, the Lamborghini police are more of a show and most speeding tickets are issued by Dubai's highly advanced network of speeding cameras. Speeding tickets range from $100 to $3,000 based on how much you break the speed limit by and as you aren't stopped each time you speed, it's very easy to rack up thousands of dollars in fines. For instance, this one British tourist was able to rack up over $47,000 in fines in just 4 hours speeding up to 150 miles per hour. With a bunch of multi-millionaires and billionaires living in Dubai with supercars, it's easy to see how speeding tickets are a great source of revenue for the Dubai government after issuing driver's licenses. Speaking of licenses, to get a business license it will cost you over $8,000 per year. But again, the good thing is that you don't have to pay them any taxes so this is actually a much better option for most businesses. Moving on. Partying is frowned upon in Dubai especially when it includes alcohol. 
being drunk in public can get you arrested and lead to hefty fines. But even before that, alcohol itself carries hefty taxes of 50% import tax and 30% alcohol tax. Furthermore, carbonated beverages are taxed at 50% and tobacco and energy drinks are taxed at 100%. But don't get me wrong here, if you just stick to the rules and don't party, you can take home tens of thousands of dollars more compared to most countries. However, given the demographics in Dubai, many people end up paying many of these fees. In the end, Dubai is able to thrive without taxes on its residents due to the plethora of government-owned businesses, high income from tourism, along with hefty fines and fees for people who like to live a little on the edge. This diversification of income initially rose out of necessity as Dubai didn't have much oil revenue, but today, this has clearly paid off allowing its residents to live mostly tax-free, and Dubai is very proud of this. Their vice president, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, has declared that his country would never adopt an income tax as a way to tackle a deficit. So, this situation seems applicable to Dubai for the foreseeable future. But that's just what I think. What do you guys think about Dubai? Make sure to comment that down below. Also, if you guys thought this video clearly explained how Dubai thrives without implementing taxes, then make sure to drop a like, and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more questions just like this one logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.